Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today we're doing a blingy bottles tag and I haven't been tagged, but this tag was created by Pinoy Kiwi Scent. Um, I assume if anybody wants to do this tag, they are free to do it. So please do it if you haven't done it already and you would like to. But I do have quite a selection of bottles that I consider to be blingy. And I, if you've not subscribed, then please consider subscribing because I do lots of perfume videos. Um, I do quite a variety of different free videos. I do a lot of tag videos, but I also do haul videos. And I also try to do a few sort of general interest kind of science based videos around perfume. So if that's the kind of thing that interests you, then please subscribe. OK, so now for some blingy bottles. So this is the first fragrance I want to talk about. This is Orchid Soleil by Tom Ford. And this bottle is just pure bling, isn't it? It's in a, like a rose gold kind of shiny, um, almost kind of ribbed kind of bottle. This is their just general line, not their private line. But yeah, I feel like this one is total bling. It looks like sunshine, doesn't it? It looks, you imagine sort of like a, a tanning person on a beach when you look at this bottle. And that kind of reflects what the fragrance smells like in a way, because it does have that kind of vanilla-y, chestnut-y kind of dry down to it. But it also does have like a very sharp opening with the red lily and the tuberose really all the way through this. So yeah, I, that for me is definitely blingy and probably the most bling in my collection for sure. So yeah, that's Tom Ford Orchid Soleil. So the next two are actually looking quite refined in comparison to the previous one. So this one is Nina Ricci L'Extase Rose Absolu and this one is Nina Ricci Champ L'Extase. And these bottles, you know, they have the gold top and they have the gold surround around the bottles with the pattern of the, of the geometric flower shapes and this kind of smoky grey for this one and kind of a, a azure blue for this one. They really do look pretty classy from my mind for these fragrances. For the price that the fragrances are, I think these are well-made, well well-made, well-designed bottles. I think also the colour of these bottles perfectly reflects the, the fragrances. So this one is kind of like oody, almost oody kind of rose fragrance and I feel like that is perfectly reflected by the bottle design and bottle colour. And this one is more of an aquatic kind of sea mineral note uh, with a bit of caramel and raspberry and yeah I think they, they really do reflect the fragrances inside them so I think perfect job from Nina Ricci there. These next bottles are sort of a love it or hate it and that is what you get with Marc Jacobs bottle design. They are very in your face kind of bottles. They're always over, very over the top and this one is um, Decadent and also the Flanker fragrance um, Oso Decadent. They both have this kind of snakeskin design top and they have these gold uh, chains and the larger bottle also has a tassel and you can't get more bling than a tassel and a gold chain. This one you can kind of hold up like a handbag almost and the fragrances themselves I think you know decadence it is decadent it's very it's a very deep plum kind of fragrance with a lot of vetiver and also some saffron and also decadent is very much more a more fresh fragrance more spring-like yeah I think they they are over the top, but I do kind of have a love-hate relationship with these these bottle designs. I think I think they're they're definitely stand out. Let's put it that way. So yeah, those are the next ones. Mark Jacobs Decadence line. So I'm going to go for kind of sophisticated bling, bling that is not obvious. So this one is a Chloe fragrance, and this one is Chloe Low. So Chloe Low has a kind of a, a rose lemonade vibe to it. It's very kind of fresh feeling, but it's also got that undertone of rose and this to me is bling but understated kind of almost um, upper class bling because the tops to these fragrances are actually um, sterling silver and you know you, if you haven't seen the the top tarnish you're not going to know that but yeah Chloe have made the tops to their fragrances in the past in sterling silver um, obviously it's only plate but um, still, you know, not something you'd expect from a designer fragrance brand, brand at all these days. And the bottles are quite classic. And I just think it is quite bling, especially when you, someone's bothered to clean it, which I'm afraid I haven't. But yeah, get your silver polish out and this is definitely bling for sure. But understated bling. So that's Chloe. So this is another fragrance line that I think is pretty blingy. And that's the Versace Crystal Noir and Yellow Diamond. And also the Bright Crystal of Absolute and Bright Crystal kind of line. And so I just have two. I have um, Versace Crystal Noir EDT and I have Versace Yellow Diamond Intense. And both of these bottles are pretty blingy to me. They're kind of, you know, they look like a, um, a faceted jewel. Um, and they have this kind of gold Versace logo in the top of their lids. And yeah, they are just quite, kind of quite 
in your face really aren't they they're just quite big and oversized and um you know i think the colors do reflect the fragrances in a way especially for the yellow diamond one this is a very yellow feeling fragrance with the kind of warm florals and the and the citrus notes but um versace crystal noir is very cold almost spicy kind of fragrance to me um which i don't think really comes across with the bottle design but yeah it is kind of dark and mysterious in a way but but in a very non-obvious way so yeah i don't know how you would design a bottle to say that but those two are my next blingy bottle choice, Versace Crystal Noir and Versace Yellow Diamond Intense. Now, I don't think a blingy bottles video could be complete without actually mentioning probably the blingiest of the perfume houses that are available on the high street. And that one is Mugler to me. So Mugler really pushes the boundaries with his bottle designs, I think. And, you know, if you go back to 1992, he was designing b bottles not like this one because I think the original Angel was in a slightly different bottle if, as, as I understand it but this bottle really does stand out for Angel. I've got the EDP and yeah it just it really strikes me and I, I think kind of I know people don't like the way it lays down but it does look beautiful on your dressing table. I also have the Eau Crozier version from um, 2020 so the brightly coloured bottle. The colours in this really do say bling to me um, very suggestive of a tropical fragrance, which this one is. And then I also have Angel Nova. So I got this one for Christmas and this one for my birthday. And I've not talked about them yet, but I probably will film a, a haul video and discuss them more fully. But yeah, I think these are all very bling and they really do reflect the fragrance type that is within these. So this one is kind of like a very bright rose, lychee raspberry fragrance. Um, and then this one is just kind of mysterious patchouli kind of... Um, pineapple -y. it's a mishmash there's a lot of stuff in this so yeah I think they just look a bit mysterious and they make you want to wear them they just look very attractive it does kind of upset me a little bit that that Moogler kind of re redesigned the bottles because you know these two look like they're laying down the job when when Angel Nova's sort of doing all the work here but I can see why people don't like the laying down bottles so we'll forgive him so my Final blingy bottles are this one, so this is YSL Black Opium, and you can see that there's got this kind of black sparkly um, finish to the bottle. I think even the intense version, the blue one, is even more sparkly than this. I think that you know this reflects how this fragrance is is regarded. Really, I mean, it's 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 regarded as the ultimate clubbing fragrance, Black Opium. Um, it's a super sweet, you know, almost sickly kind of vanilla-y coffee fragrance. I do really enjoy it, actually, but I do have to be in the mood. But um, yeah, this for sure does reflect exactly how people have used this fragrance. And I like the bottle, but they were constrained by the original opium bottle, weren't they, in a, in a way? So they had to just kind of jazz it up a bit for a modern age. But yeah, so that's Black Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. And the final uh, bling bottle that I have is one that does look quite subtle actually so this is madonna truth or dare this is basically a tuberose gardenia kind of bomb really really heavy white florals with also red lily and vanilla as well and the top has kind of like a sceptered kind of um almost kind of royal looking top um it does look kind of bling the bottle itself looks a bit like a tombstone i don't know whether madonna was going for a tombstone but that's what she got so I'd imagine that Madonna did have quite something to do with this because, you know, she's a bit of a diva and she's not going to sign something off that she's not happy with. But um, yeah, it's a weird bottle and quite blingy in, in its own way, but more of a subtle way than some of the other bottles we've seen. So that's my last blingy bottle, Madonna, truth or dare. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.